Hi, Larry K, ShadowAnyone.com. You know those uh, coffee pots, the ones that make one cup of coffee, you kind of open up the top, you put in the little packet, and you close the top, and it makes you one cup of coffee? Those machines, which are wildly popular, they're in like 15 million homes right now. Uh, do you know how much that company makes on each machine they sell? The answer is nothing. Nothing. It's essentially a break-even thing for them. You know, where do they make their money? They make their money in selling those little single cup refills. And this is very interesting. It's a very uh, interesting distinction. Uh, and it leads into what I want to teach you today about private investigations, why some private investigators are making money and some are starving. Uh, so let me pull an article here. It's from uh, Fortune magazine. And I do actually get the physical magazine. It's not reading online. I don't know if that makes me old or what. I just like to have the thing. Uh, but interestingly enough, 73% of its 2013 uh, sales were from these little cup things. And by the way, those 2013 sales were $4.4 billion. All right. Now, the, uh, the thing that I want you to know about this, and it's, it's something that their chief technology officer, Kevin Sullivan, says. He says, and I'm, I'm going to quote him here, if you don't make money on the appliance and you only make money when the appliance works, it's a whole different game. And I love that. I love that a lot uh, because what these guys are all about, and I can I find uh, the exact words that he uses are uh, that he every time they make a cup of coffee, they have to replicate perfection. Every cup has to be exactly the same and has to be perfect. That's how they make their money. Now, for a private investigator or detective agency, and by the way, if you're watching this, I can guarantee you're one of the few. This is not going to be the most popular video I make uh, because most people are interested in some seedy little secret or trick and you need to know the techniques. You need to know those things. But when the rubber hits the road, if you're in the business of private investigations, you have to have business. Um, I like to say a boxer who doesn't have a ring is just a guy going around punching people. So. How does this, this coffee pot thing translate to you? There are two basic models, as near as I can tell, for people in a private investigation agency, uh, industry agencies to make their money. One model is to work for everyone once. Um, and there are, this is the smaller number of agencies that are out there. I firmly believe this. I think in my rather large town, we have three agencies who kind of subscribe to this mentality that you know everyone if everyone hires us just that one time in their life that they need a private investigator we can make some pretty good money and they charge an enormous amount of money uh, they are, are only going to have that client one time uh, and in my view it's because they're going after a client who may only need a PI once in their life but the other thing is I'm not sure those people would even go back to that agency to rehire them if they did need a PI again. What kind of level of work are they giving? What kind of results are, are these agencies doing giving to people? Uh, just not that great in my view. And I, I uh, tell you on the uh, surveillance training DVD, Investigator's Ultimate Guide to Surveillance, about a, a time when I was out there with another agency. Uh, we both were hired for the same exact case at the same exact time, and it's a long story how that happened. Uh, but, you know, the next morning, it's the middle of the night, I got to follow this guy. And the next morning, I called a client to give her a briefing on what happened. And she was shocked at the information I had for her because I had found the guy, followed the guy, had a full report for her, including video, of course, uh, that I was able to send to her. She was shocked. She said, well, the other agency said that the guy wasn't even out there. And the other agency, I can tell you, I promise you, they charged more than me. I know exactly what they charged her. It was a non-refundable, which I'm not fundamentally opposed to a non-refundable retainer, a non-refundable fee. Uh, but, you know, when, when you're working for individuals, when you're working for people who are just at the end of their rope and desperate for an answer or solution, and that's why they hire a private detective, they will pay enormous amounts of money, even money they don't really have. They will borrow and they will get it somehow. 
And I just feel like if I had been that other agency, I would have at least sent out some feelers or tried to make it up to her somehow. They were not at all interested in that. And that was just, that's just the mentality of that agency. If everybody hires us once, we're going to make good money. The other way to approach the business, the way I prefer, is like the coffee cup people. Uh, the, to have these repeat customers over and over again. There's so many advantages to this. For example, uh, you don't have to have that marketing cost over and over again. If you get in with a law firm and they hire you, then they're going to come to you over and over again. They don't want the hassle of trying to find a new investigator. Uh, so give good results every time. Uh, and, and this is, and I resisted this early on. I didn't really want to have to rely on uh, law, uh, uh, law firms. I didn't want to have to really rely on big companies who would hire me for workers' compensation cases over and over again. Uh, but I found out that is the most reliable business there is. Uh, and there's plenty of law firms and plenty of companies you can work for. But you have to replicate that perfection. Every case doesn't have to be smooth. Everything doesn't have to go uh, perfectly. The person doesn't have to be a workers' compensation cheat every single case. You have no control over that whatsoever. But you have to bring them that good uh, response, that, that good product, if you will, over and over again. And, and I like that business model. It's the way uh, I like to do things. Even with my training materials, um, I can tell you about one in ten people who get one of my things come back and get everything. And that's the best feeling for me. I love that because I know that they recognize the value, they're getting value out of it. Uh, I mean, I, admittedly, it's not cheap stuff. It's not cheap stuff. It's worth it. And, you know, these people come back and they know, okay, I'm going to pay hundreds of dollars for this training, but they know either from experience or because they're getting into the business that it's going to be making them that money over and over again. Um, so when you're running your business, if you have an agency now or you're looking to come on with an agency and, and give them a little bit of here's what I think, I, I really highly recommend a good, solid product over and over again for that repeat business. That's where all the money is most of the time is in what we call in business the back end. So get a piece of that back end, do a really good job, and uh, everybody wins in that case, which is exactly the way business should be. This is Larry K, shadowanyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.